most people sleep about eight hours per night and that's also the recommendation for adults the recommendation is to sleep about seven to nine hours and uh, if you follow this advice then you're going to spend nearly one third of your life being asleep <laughs> that's that's quite a long time and it definitely makes you think about how much time are we actually spending in this you know dreamlike state and how less time we can spend being awake a few years ago when i was in college i wanted to put this theory to the test and see whether or not you can function and be healthy with less sleep i tried polyphasic sleeping and i slept for only about four hours throughout the entire 24 hour period and it was quite interesting and it was definitely eye-opening in many aspects. In this video, I'm going to tell you about my polyphasic sleeping experience when I slept only four hours per day for 100 days. I don't sleep. You don't sleep. I wait. In the 1920s, Thomas Edison patented the first light bulb, which gave rise to the illumination of darkness by artificial light. Despite his high productivity and inventions, Thomas Edison supposedly slept only three to four hours a night and called sleep a waste of time. To solve his fear of wasting time while sleeping, Thomas Edison followed a polyphasic sleeping schedule that incorporates frequent short power naps throughout the day. So, what is polyphasic sleeping? When you sleep once throughout the night without waking up other than going to the bathroom, then that's monophasic sleep. You sleep for an entire block of time in one go and stay awake during daytime. Polyphasic sleep involves having several sleep cycles throughout the 24 hour period. In essence, you sleep fewer hours in one sleep cycle, but you do it more frequently. This type of behavior can be found in many animal species and even in some past societies. Hunter-gatherers are awake during some parts of the night to wear off predators. Homer wrote about ancient Greeks talking of two sleeps. And many geniuses like Leonardo da Vinci, Napoleon Bonaparte and Nikola Tesla are said to have practiced something similar. And that's why I wanted to try out polyphasic sleeping and see if it works. So I did it in my last year of college and I followed it for 100 days. My core sleep lasted from 11 p.m. to about 2 a.m which is roughly three hours. Then I would get up in the middle of the night, start working, writing, doing some other creative things, and I stayed awake for about four hours until 7 a.m. After that, I would have about a 25 minute power nap and get back up to start the day in the morning. I would continue going about my business until 10 or 11 a.m. and have another 25 minute nap. That would be my last sleep cycle before I go to bed at night again. So I had one core sleep, and two naps. Sometimes I would have either a third nap somewhere around 2 p.m. or I would increase my sleep time by an additional 45 minutes during the first nap at 7 a.m. In total I would sleep about four hours during this one 24-hour period. So what happened? How did I feel? Surprisingly I didn't feel awful and I didn't feel like dying and I kind of adapted to it quite fast. Maybe the first three to five days were slightly offbeat and sluggish but uh, after that, I got used to it quite fast and I didn't notice a lot of difference. Of course, it was always somewhat difficult to wake yourself up in the middle of the night and cut your sleep short. But it was never something unbearable and uh, I woke up quite fast and I didn't need like any stimulants to wake myself up or keep myself awake. The biggest difference I noticed was the speed of my recovery. I just wasn't able to recover from physical exercise as fast as I could and it definitely had like a negative impact on my strength and especially explosiveness. I could do like endurance type of activities no problem but there wasn't like this you know higher gear of explosiveness just because of the sleep deprivation and if I did have like a harder workout then uh, my recovery was also somewhat slower because I didn't get enough sleep. Sleep is one of the most crucial parts for uh, resistance training recovery and uh, building muscles so that was the biggest difference and it was that was also the biggest reason why i stopped doing the polyphasic sleeping because i just wanted to keep progressing and i didn't want to stay at a plateau if i were to be like a sedentary person who doesn't really train that much or doesn't work out then i could potentially pull it off for a much longer period of time without seeing any negative side effects like uh, i think 
the biggest demand for sleep comes from physical exercise and the mental exercise or the mental stimulus is less taxing on your nervous system and you can kind of get away with less sleep from that. In a funny way, my creativity and productivity didn't suffer either. Like I was still able to write every day. I was still able to create videos. I was still able to do my college studies and those sort of things without seeing a drop off in my performance. So yeah, like the biggest culprit is the physical exercise. So how does polyphasic sleeping work? The theory behind polyphasic sleep is that you can condition your brain to cut off the lesser important stages of sleep. By doing this, you can gain a lot of waking time, which would have otherwise been spent in bed without even being rejuvenated from it. Although I do agree that the majority of NREM sleep is used to slowly transition your body into deep sleep and REM sleep, it's just that light sleep probably has a significant role in some other aspects, which we may not fully comprehend yet. And at the same time, getting a lot of light sleep and very little deep sleep is definitely much worse than getting little light sleep and sufficient amounts of deep sleep. Edison himself said that he didn't dream almost at all during the night because he thought he was so efficient with his sleep that he didn't need it. Unfortunately, I think his brain was just missing out on REM and he spent most of his time in this semi-deep and light sleep. Most of dreaming happens in REM sleep. To compensate for his short 3-4 to four hour sleep during the night, Edison had multiple short power naps throughout the day. He was renowned for having sleeping cots in almost all of his vicinities, like the library, office, laboratory and park. With that being said, I do think that if you are somewhat sleep deprived or short on sleep, then you're probably going to go into deep sleep faster because your body wants to go into sleep faster and uh, therefore it will by default cut down on the amount of light sleep that you can get. So the theory behind polyphasic sleeping, I think it probably is true to a certain extent. Like uh, you will experience minor sleep deprivation, but whether or not it's going to be harmful depends a lot on the amount of quality sleep that you get and how much deep sleep especially are you getting. Just sleep a little faster. There are many different types of polyphasic sleeping. Segmented sleep is biphasic. It consists of two sleeps both at night. You first sleep for three to four hours, stay awake for two hours and sleep for another three to four hours. Siesta sleep is also biphasic and it's very common. It consists of 5 to 6 hours a night and a 30 to 90 minute nap in the afternoon. Triphasic sleep is where it actually gets polyphasic. You sleep 3 times a day for 1.5 to 2 hours with 6 hours in between naps. Everyman sleep is the most popular type of polyphasic sleep. Everyman 2 E2 with a core sleep of 4.5 to 6 hours and 2 20 minute naps. Everyman 3 E3 is with a core of 3 to 4 hours and 3 naps. E4 is with a core of 1.5 to 2 hours and 4 naps. I myself did some form of a everyman sleep, where I had 1 core sleep and 2 naps. Uberman sleep is where things go crazy. It's the most commonly attempted but most failed schedule. You get rid of core sleep entirely and have 6 or 8 20 minute naps a day. This is extremely difficult, but it'll also give you drastic gains in time because you'll be sleeping a total of 2 to 3 hours a day. Demaxian sleep is even more difficult than Uberman, and very little people can actually do it. You sleep 4 times a day for 30 minutes. I think that it's probably not possible to do something like Uberman or Demaxian for any longer than a few weeks without it severely damaging your health. Some form of siesta sleep, dual core or everyman are less difficult and they could have more application for some people who do shift work or who travel a lot. So overall I would say that some form of polyphasic sleeping can be useful for sharpening your mind and being more productive. You're going to gain a lot more wakefulness time and you will also kind of in a weird way make your brain work more sharply because it's somewhat sleep deprived and therefore you can get more creative thoughts and you will also be more diligent with uh, the work. You kind of have this heightened sense of uh, focus and alertness which is probably because of the increased adrenaline and increased cortisol. But in the long term, if you do it for too long or if you become way too sleep deprived, then it probably has some negative effects, especially when it comes to blood sugar regulation and uh, insulin resistance. Diabetes. But I still think that everyone can benefit from some form of polyphasic sleeping. It's going to teach you one very important skill, which is the ability to take naps and fall asleep faster. Before I went to college, I already had some experience with this type of polyphasic sleeping because I went to the military and there you're kind of forced 
to go through these irregular sleeping patterns and have naps whenever you can. So even though I'm not doing a full-on polyphasic sleeping schedule at the moment, I still incorporate power naps into my day quite frequently and I do it almost every day. If you sleep at irregular times and for indefinite lengths, then it can mess up your circadian rhythms and it can make you not fall asleep at night which is why you want to be quite strategic with your naps and have them at the right time. Usually I would say that the best time to have a nap is around 12 to 2 p.m. because uh, then it's still the afternoon and you've built up some tension from the morning. So you have your body has a reason to gain the benefits from the nap and it's not too late in the day which will otherwise keep you awake at night. So that's the perfect time in my opinion and the siesta sleep which happens around 12 to 2 p.m. in these Mediterranean countries is also very common. So, in conclusion, I tried polyphasic sleeping where I slept for only 4 hours a day for 100 days and it was quite interesting. It was, in my opinion, it was a good skill to develop and it definitely taught me how to sleep better, how to sleep at, you know, these different kinds of positions and how to sleep just like that, you know, you go, you fall asleep faster and uh, you condition your brain to cut down on some of the light sleep without sacrificing deep sleep in my experience. I myself am using the Oura Ring to track my sleep every night. Most nights I sleep like 6 to 7 hours while still getting high amounts of REM and deep sleep. One important takeaway message is also that it's not the length or the quantity of your sleep that matters. The quality of it is a lot more important. You can sleep for over 10 hours, but it really doesn't matter if it's poor quality and if you're only getting predominantly light sleep. On the other hand, you can sleep only 6 hours and get a lot of deep sleep and REM sleep. And, but thanks to cutting down on the light sleep, you're still getting healthy amounts of sleep, so you're not feeling sleep deprived. If you want to know how to sleep better, get more deep sleep, correct your circadian rhythm, sleep wake on the cycles, and improve overall recovery, then check out my total sleep optimization video course. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.